Thank you so much for joining us online today. You can continue to help us bring messages just like this one by going to anchorpoint.tv slash give. I hope this message encourages you today and helps you grow on your journey with Jesus. Now let's dive in. Amazing worship and I want this camera right here. I just want to look into the camera today. I just got to warn you. I'm going I'm going to preach it like you're here. I got an amen gallery all throughout this little room here. A few people here with us, but I am so thankful that you decided to join us today. Thank you. Uh, whenever and wherever you are watching this stream, uh, I am uh, grateful uh, that you would spend time through the power of technology with us today. And man, we're kicking off part number one of a brand new series. Hey, if you got your Bibles, you got your Bibles in here, team, go ahead and grab them. We're going to be in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, chapter 17, part number one of a series called Canceled. And uh, I am tired of that word, but I am excited about this series. And, and people always ask me, they always ask me, you know, like things like, you know, where, where, where do you get your ideas for sermons at? Does God kind of like speak to you? Does he just kind of drop things in your spirit? And sometimes, you know, I feel like God just gives me a word. Sometimes I'm reading the Bible and we get an idea. And, and, and other times it's the Holy Spirit. Uh, this time it was not the Holy Spirit. It was the Avery Spirit. Come on, somebody. Uh, I was actually, we were praying through, thinking through what this next series needed to be. And I asked my wife, I said, hey, didn't you do a little thing? She's got a podcast, by the way, Flourish Living, Flourish, 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 Flourish podcast. Uh, Avery Forrest, you can look it up online. Uh, <laughs> and she was like, man, there's so much things that we can't do. Let's, uh, I just decided to talk to a group of leaders about what they can do. And I thought, man, that just, man, it set something off in my spirit that I'm like, man, we have got to do a, a series on that. And uh, so uh, I don't know how long it'll be. We'll kind of just figure out what God wants to do with it. Uh, but we're going to start today in Jeremiah 17. Go to the book of Psalms, hang a right. You'll find Jeremiah hanging out there. Hey, before we get to the text, before we get to the text, let me ask you a question real quick. Uh, if you're watching where you can comment, maybe you're watching on Facebook or YouTube or live.anchorpoint.tv, wherever you're watching at today, I want you to, what is one thing that you are super bummed about? I want you to type it in the comments. One thing that's been canceled that you are super bummed about. Maybe it was, maybe you're watching, it was graduation. You're like, man, that's just, I mean, it's, but man, that just, that just stinks. Or maybe it was a birthday or a wedding anniversary. Some of you guys are happy the quarantine anniversary, limited resources needed. Anyway, man, I don't know what it, maybe it was prom. I mean, whatever it was that you were super bummed about. I just want you to type that in the comments. And I was thinking, I was thinking of some things that I was super bummed about. Now, my, my boy Bobby Singh is in the house, my LD, lighting director, Bobby Singh. And me and Bobby are NBA fans. And I was really bummed that they canceled most of the NBA. And we don't even know that. In fact, Friday, Bobby, they were supposed to start, let's pass Friday, the, the NBA playoffs. And I was just bummed because I feel like they robbed LeBron of his fourth ring. They knew he was going to win. They knew he's come, you know, he knew he's going to uh, calm down, people. Don't be booing nothing. I hate Got, got, got four people in the room and they boo me, man. That's a make a pastor feel good right there. Hey, I was a little bummed about March Madness. Just going to be honest, a little bummed about March Madness. But the one thing I was most bummed about, the one thing, the one thing I was most bummed about happened on May the 6th, 2010. And that's when they canceled the TV show 24. That was the last one, May the 6th, 2010. Now, they had a season in 2014 called Live Another Day, but I really didn't. I, I, I watched it, but I knew I wasn't going to get to see another day of Jack Bauer's life. So anyway, they canceled the greatest TV show ever and the greatest superhero ever, Jack Bauer. But I want to start with this series, with this principle, not everything is canceled. Not everything is canceled. There is a lot that can be done. There is a lot to be done. And I don't know how the whole virus thing works out. I don't know how it all kind of goes away in this and the plan and all this stuff. But I know this. I know God can use this for his glory and our good. I don't know how God does this. I just know that God does this. And I want to kind of look at that concept from Jeremiah. If you're there, Jeremiah chapter 17, Jeremiah chapter 17. Now, Jeremiah, just to kind of set the scene, is a prophet of God. And what that means is 
is that he is a messenger of God. He is God's delivery system. He's the FedEx man for God. He's the Amazon Prime man for God. And uh, in Jeremiah 17, he is dealing with a nation that has turned their backs on God. Uh, the biblical word for that is idolatry. And uh, and Jeremiah is using a, a, a this, this backdrop of idolatry, and God sends Jeremiah to his people with a message of judgment. Yeah, happy to be here today. Don't click off the stream. It gets better, okay? He sends them with a message of judgment and of hardship, and Jeremiah starts preaching the word of the Lord, and people are going, man, he's calling people out. He, he, he's, he's, he's laying it out there, and people don't like it. In fact, they threaten to kill his life. In fact, his own family, his own family hires an assassin to try and kill him. Come on, somebody, Jeremiah. I'm glad I'm not like Jeremiah, okay? All right. But Jeremiah is faithful to the word of the Lord. And uh, the thing I'm most grateful for is even in times of hardship, God extends hope. Jeremiah 17, we'll pick it up in verse number 5. 17, verse number 5. This is what the Lord says. Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who draws strength from mere flesh, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. That person will be like a bush in the wasteland. They will not see prosperity even when it comes. They will dwell in the parched places of the desert in a salt land where no one lives. Thank you, Jeremiah. You can see why people wanted to kill him, can't you? <laughs> I mean, he was depressing, right? But it doesn't stop there, okay? So that says, it says, cursed is the man who trusts, who tr the one who trusts in man. Watch this, verse number seven, verse number seven. But blessed is the one who trust in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when the heat comes. It its leaves are always green, and it has no worries in a year of drought. And I love this. Never, it never fails to produce fruit. I want to speak to you from the concept or the title, You Still Can. You still can. You still can grow in this season. You, you, you can still, you can still produce even in a year of drought. You can still connect with God. You can still do it. You can still in the, even in the middle of drought, you can, I know there's a lot of things in this life that you can't do, but you can see the goodness of the Lord in this season. You can see the goodness of the Lord in 2020. I want to speak to you from the concept. You still can. Somebody type that in the comments. Comments. You still can. You still can. You still can. You still can. Jeremiah in the Bible uses a lot of agricultural analogies, trees, plants, seeds, soil, a lot, a lot of agricultural analogy, and all of them have spiritual applications. And if you're where you can interact with me, let me see this camera right here. If you're where you can interact with me, I want you to find the plant emoji if you're a plant person. If you, I don't, how many, how many plant people do we have in a room? You like plants? A few plant people, your plants make you happy. If, if plants make you happy, I want you to find the plant emoji and just drop that in the comments if you can. Uh, you can do a raised hand if you can't find a plant emoji. And, and, and uh, plant people, plant, I'm not talking about like you love plants, they make you happy. I'm not like, like for me, plants are like torture. I grew up way back in the day in the 1900s. Come on, somebody. I grew up in the ancient 1900s where physical labor was not a, was not abuse for kids. You know what I'm talking about? All right. I grew up back then. And, and so I, I don't really love my, my wife. My wife is she's a plant person. She loves plants. She loves to buy them and take care of them and love them and pet them. She does not smoke them. But I just thought I'd throw that out there. Hello. Are you paying attention? See, the thing is, I love plant people. I just don't understand plant people. It's kind of like yard people. If you're a yard person, you might want to raise your hand too. Raise your hand online if you're a yard person. You love your yard. You take care of your yard. You seed it and you fertilize it and you pet it. Whatever you do, I love you. I just don't understand you. What I've noticed from my wife taking care of plants is it takes time, care, and intentionality. Time, care, and intentionality. And what I want to do today, my goal today is to show you that that's what it's going to take to grow in this season. A lot of time, a lot of care, and a lot of intentionality. We still can. 
we can still have opportunity in the middle of this opposition. The kingdom still can advance. We still can. The problem is not everyone will. We still can, but not everyone will. Some of us are going to miss this moment. Some of us are going to miss the opportunity in the middle of the opposition. We're going to miss what God can do with where we're at. So I want to answer the question, how can we? How can we grow? How can we flourish? How can we do these things in the middle of this season? What truth does Jeremiah Muriel, if you're a note taker, grab those pens and jot them down with me. The number one thing is this. Jeremiah teaches me, your trust is your choice. Your trust is your choice. If you're going to grow in this season, it's up to you. Your trust is your choice. It is up to you. This is about personal spiritual growth. Your your spiritual growth cannot be delegated. Okay, it is up to you. You must own the responsibility first and foremost for your spiritual growth. No one's going to do it for you. No one's going to make you do it. It is up to you. And what I want to do is I want to look at the text and I want to show you how Jeremiah compare and contrast these people. Look at verse number. Let's throw it on the screen. Verse number five, five and seven. This is what the word of the Lord says This is what God says. If you're, if, if you're participating with me, just say it out loud in your home where you're at. He says, cursed is the one who trusts in who? In man. Wh- whoever draws strength from mere flesh and whose hearts turn away from him. So that's one. That's one group. That's one group. And he said, verse 7, but blessed, come on, say it with me, but blessed is the one who trusts in who? Say it with me. The Lord, whose confidence is in him. So there's a comparing and a contrasting between two separate groups of people. But I want you to notice that Jeremiah leaves the opportunity up to the individual. So what you got to do in this season is you got to make your growth personal. You got to make it personal. And here's why. It's different when it's personal. It's different. It's different when it's personal. Like, let me illustrate it like this. I love my kids. I like your kids. Somebody type amen. I don't know which camera I'm on right now. I type amen. It's different when it's personal. I remember before I had kids, I barely even liked other people's kids. And, and man, if they came up to me and they had all kinds of stuff going on up in here, you know, uh-uh. But it's different when it's yours. Ain't it different? Come on, parents. Ain't it different when it's yours? Your kid runs up to you, snot. And I know how this works because I got Graham. Snot rolling down. Doesn't matter. You But come here, baby boy. Let me get that clean. Why? It's different when it's yours. It's different when it's personal. And I'm telling you, if you are going to be the person that Jeremiah talks about, your trust is your choice and you're going to have to make it personal it is up to you every person that is watching this stream has a decision to make in this moment in this season who or what will you trust it's up to you Who or what will you trust? But make no doubt about it that the decisions you make today, they will impact your tomorrow. But what you do in this season is up to you. And Jeremiah says, the first thing Jeremiah says, watch this. He says, self-reliance does not produce spiritual strength. Did you notice that in the text? He says, cursed is the one who trusts in man, trusts in self, trusts in flesh. No, no. He says, spirit, self-reliance, which is a very American concept, does not produce spiritual strength. And what I have found in many believers, and this is going to be tough, but I'm getting, I'm, I'm just going, we're just there today, okay? Many people say they believe in God, but then act as if he doesn't exist. We say we trust God, but then live as if we don't. And here's how I know it. Because we make decisions before we ever ask for direction. In, in fact, we're control freaks. Except, I've noticed that we try to control things that we can't control while ignoring the things we can control. Stick with me. It's going to get better. I promise. This is like a, me- this is a Jeremiah message. It's going to get better, Terry. Just hang out with me back there, brother. This is a Jeremiah message. I'm telling you, I understand. We, we, here's my fear. 
We control everything but our spiritual life. We have spiritual apathy. And spiritual apathy doesn't move mountains. Spiritual apathy, I jotted it down like this. Spiritual apathy apathy does not produce the strength that stands in the middle of the storm. In fact, we said it like this years ago. Me and Pastor Ryan, we were working on a message together. And I, we, and I think he came up with this thought. It says, apathy is deadly. Apathy is deadly. Apathy is deadly in your marriage. Apathy is deadly if you're a parent. Apathy is deadly in your diet. Come on, quarantine 15. Come on, type that in. Quarantine 15. Apathy is deadly. Apathetic followers of Jesus don't change the world. Sold out. All in. Passionate. Active. Grounded. Rooted. Those are the ones that took the message of the resurrection of Jesus and created a movement that no government can cancel. No demon in hell can cancel. They tried to stop him, but he got up on the third day because nothing or no one can stop the plan of God. But what you do is up to you. I don't know about you and I don't know about everybody watching on the stream, but what you do is up to you. But as for me and my house, we will Will serve and trust the Lord. Oh, anybody want pastor? I just want I'm just concerned. Well, you can be concerned and not be consumed. What you do is up to you. Well, I just want to be informed, Pastor. I just want to be informed. Well, can I tell you something? You can be informed, but not nervous. What you do is up to you. You could be focused on the pain and still lift your voice in praise. What you do is up to you. Your trust is your choice. Your truck, calm down. Calm down, Pastor. Calm down. Calm down. Oh, man, this thing is burning in me today. Come on. There's a lot that you can't, can't do, but your trust is your choice. What you do is up to you in my prayer. And this is a dangerous prayer. If you want to pray this prayer, this is a dangerous prayer, Will. God, help me trust you more. Um, you start... <laughs> Ain't that right, amen, gallery? You start praying that stuff, you better get ready for the... <laughs> you better get ready. And I prayed a dangerous prayer this week. I said, God, I want to trust you on a deeper, deeper level. And here's why. Because there's been seasons in my life that I've misplaced my confidence. There's been times that i placed my confidence in circumstances only to see circumstances change. There's been times that I place my confidence in people only to see people disappoint me. And that's the temptation in this season is to misplace your confidence. The temptation in this season is to place your confidence in something other than Christ. You know what the biblical word for that is? Idolatry. Now, hold on. I'm out. Jeremiah, he had an issue. The issue with the people God sent him to preach to was idolatry. I think the number one temptation in this season is idolatry. Now, here's what I know. Most of us aren't bowing down to idols in our house. We bow down to items that are idols in our heart. It's going to get better. I promise you it will get better. I'm going to preach you in. I'm going to preach you into strength by the end of this. But we got to get through this first. Idolatry is simply misplaced confidence. An idol is anything you put ahead of God. Let me say it like this. Idolatry is competition for your confidence. Somebody needs to type that in the comments. Idolatry, the simplest form I could give you, is competition for your confidence. Your confidence is your choice. But I want to tell you today that the God in heaven has a track record of trustworthiness. 
And if you want to get through this season better than you ever dreamed or ever hoped or ever, ever con- better than you think that the news could tell you, put your trust in him. But I can't force you and I can't make you. Your trust is your choice. You still can, but your trust is your choice. Number two, number two, jot it down. Number two, your trust is your choice. Number two, God has unseen resources. Now, point number one, guys, was heavy. We're about to get happy, okay? All right, God has unseen resources, okay? Now, now just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there, okay? Just ask my wife, okay? All right, uh, if, if you're a man watching this stream and you, can, and you can throw an emoji in, how many men are bad lookers? Come on, in the, in, in the room, you can play along too. You're a bad, my, my wife says I'm just a bad looker. And she says just because I can't see it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't mean it's not there. Come on, somebody, I'm preaching good. I'm preaching really good <laughs> right now. And I want to tell you, God's got some unseen resources. And though you can't see it, doesn't mean mean it's not there. In fact, a couple weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, I taught you BTS, behind the scenes. I got another BTS for you. It's called beneath the surface. Come on, somebody. If you can preach pretty, why not? Come on, it's beneath the surface. And sometimes we miss the greatest moments in our spiritual growth because it's beneath the surface. I have missed some of the greatest opportunities of my spiritual growth because it was happening beneath the surface and it didn't look the way I expected it to look. Because we think spiritual growth and revival is all this big stuff. Maybe it doesn't look like that. Look at the text. Look at the t- I'll show you in the text. You know, some of you look like, I don't know if I believe that. Watch this. The people who place their trust and confidence in God, Jeremiah says, verse 8, they will be like a tree, say it with me, planted by the water that sends out, its, sends, sends out its roots by the stream. A tree planted by water never loses touch with its strength or its source. Okay? So Jeremiah's not saying you are a tree. He's saying you can be like a tree that is planted by the water and it sends roots out, okay? So Jeremiah says, just keep me on this camera right here. I want to break down this text. Trusting and depending on God places me by a powerful source. So before we go any further in this pandemic, God's power is not in question. If God is so good, why didn't he stop the virus? If God is so holy... How can I approach him? I think we got the question wrong. If God is so awesome and powerful, why would he? Why would he extend mercy to somebody like me? I think we got the question. God's power is not in question. We're talking about the God of the universe. We're talking about the God who spoke and worlds existed and galaxies flung to the car far corners of the universe. God's power is not in question. We're talking about the God who put his hands in mud and made man and breathed life into his nostril. God's power is not in question. The question is how do we access God's power? What does the access look like? Well, Jeremiah gives us a hint. He says, well, if you're planted by water, then you send out the word as roots. And so I want to talk about roots, okay? So I did so much study on roots. I could have a TV show on HGTV, okay? And I ain't even a plant person. But y'all, I study about plants, okay? I'm telling you right now. Uh, well, I don't know if HGTV still has plant shows. I think they just have uh, shows that make you, you know, make you depressed about the house that you live in. And then they have the House Hunter episode where they're a barista at Starbucks and have a $3.9 million budget. But other than that, other than that, other than that, it's great, great, great network sometimes. All right, I want to talk about roots, all right? And I, I'm going to lean on my notes cause, so we get this. And, 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 and so roots are the support system, check this out, beneath the surface that sustains what we see, okay? So if I had to condense that, let me say it like this. Roots pull nutrients from unseen resources. 
It is the unseen parts of my life that impacts the seen parts of my life. Pa Pastor Craig Groeschel says it like this. It's the things that no one sees that leads to the things that everyone wants. So when you see someone who is strong in their faith and you see someone who is strong in the Lord, that strength that you see was developed by private disciplines that you did not see. See, this, the roots pull nutrients, resource, growth from the unseen resources. Let me say it like this. Let me give you another one. Roots aren't pretty. They're productive. Roots aren't pretty. Growth starts in the roots. Power comes from the roots. Roots stabilize the plant and attach it to the soil so that it has a firm foundation. In fact, I figured this out. We'll just talk for a minute, and then I'll yell in a minute. <laughs> Roots grow beneath the surface without outward evidence. Did you know that long before you see anything on the top, there is root growth going on beneath the bottom? In the, let me say it like this. It's invisible, but it's not insignificant. It's unseen, but it's not ineffective. So the reality is, don't compare the unseen portions of your life with the seen portions of everybody else's life. Oh, I know, during quarantine, you, you're, on, you're on social media, and you see, you see, you see the parents that are doing the projects, <laughs> and you're just surviving. <laughs> Feel like you living in the projects. Come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. And what, what you're doing is you're comparing the seen part of your life with, the, uh, with their life with the unseen part of your life. And I'm telling you, growth always happens beneath the surface. Let me say it like this. Roots before fruit. Everybody wants fruit. Nobody wants fruit. But it's roots before fruit. That's the way God set it up. Roots before fruit. So right now in this season, you got to be willing to grow beneath the surface. See, I don't want to. I, I don't want to just get through this. I just want to get through this. Get, no, no. I want to know what can God do with this. What can God grow in this? What can God bring out of this? I don't want to miss the potential of this. Focus on the problem caused by this because I. I know that beneath the surface, I'm pulling out power that I didn't have before. I know that beneath the surface, there is growth that I didn't see before this. I know that beneath the surface, God is moving and forming foundations and attaching me and stabilizing me because God is working Amen. beneath the surface. It's beneath the surface. Here's another one. Roots grow over time, not overnight. You got to be patient. Got to be patient in the season. That's why my wife Avery's taught me about plants. You got to be patient, cause she slowly, can, <laughs> she can slowly kill a plant. Just takes her a little time. Stay. She, I'm done. Where am I at? What camera am I on? Somebody race. Where, so give me this one here. Uh, I, I love my wife. You need to know this. And I'm sorry. This is going out to the world. It's going out to the world. She can just. I mean, she, she is like a plant torturer sometimes. I mean, it, it, it's like she waterboards plants. I mean, <laughs> I'm sweating. <laughs> I'm <not hanging. laughs> She's taught me that a plant will start to look bad, and she'll take it outside, and she'll put it by the sunlight, and she'll do her best. And she, you, you, you've saved a few. In your defense, you've saved a few. It takes time. Like, and this is tough because we like quick fixes. I say we. It's tough because I like quick fixes. In fact, I found that quick fixes, quick fixes are rarely lasting solutions. Roots 
takes some time. And if you haven't developed the roots you need by now, the next best time to start growing is now. It's now. We got to start growing now. We got to start. See, roots grow deeper during drought conditions. Oh, man, I'm, some of y'all are going to go buy plants today. Did you know all this? Can I, roots grow deeper during drought conditions. During drought conditions, the root grow deeper, roots grow deeper looking for water. Check this out. The roots know water is there. They just don't know where. So when drought comes, that root will start forging deeper and deeper and say, I know there is a resource here that I haven't tapped. God, help me communicate this right here. We are in a drought season. We're in a season of testing. We are in a season of trying. I know right now you're feeling the heat. You're feeling the constriction. You're feeling your, I get it. But right now in the unseen place, if we take advantage of this moment, the roots of your faith, the roots of your life, for those who trust in the Lord, those who place confidence in the Lord, the roots of your faith will start to search for a resource that's not, uh, that's, that, that it hasn't tapped into yet. It's there. And I want to tell somebody, you're like, I'm tired, I'm weary, I'm stressed, I'm depressed, I'm fearful, I'm anxious. There is a resource that you just haven't tapped into to yet but it's there you listen to this loud mouth today it is there in the unseen areas of your life and I promise you you cannot grow taller until you grow deeper drought conditions drought conditions produce strength for the next storm Let me say it like this. What if the storm that you don't like right now is producing strength for the storm you can't see yet? What if, I know you don't like it right now, but what, what if in this condition God is just setting you up for what's ahead? One more, one more. Not a point, but I want roots. One more thing about roots. <laughs> roots grow best in the proper place. I feel the spirit of a real estate agent on me. Location, location, location. Environments aren't neutral. Environments aren't neutral. Some environments bring out the best in you and some bring out the worst. <laughs> Come on, you know what I'm talking about. Because plants will always absorb what it's planted in. And maybe what you have been calling a dry season may just be a dry place. Man, I, I got way too many notes. The good thing is I don't have another service. So in your quarantine, you don't have anywhere else to go. All right? So... I'm going, I'm, going, I'm, going, I'm going to ring this text out today. I think about uh, the story of Elijah. Prophet Elijah, he was actually called in a time of drought. Elijah, in the book of 2 Kings, God sends him to pronounce judgment again on King Ahab. And he prophesies and he says, it's not going to rain a drop on Israel's soul until I say so. And the Bible says God took him from the palace and he stuck him by the Kareth Ravine. It was a brook that God had set up for him because God's got unseen resources. God's got hidden supply. You don't see it, but it's there. I'm telling somebody that's watching today, you have, God's got it. You just don't see it. So God takes Elijah and he takes him to the brook. And the Bible says God even dropped him off some pancakes. The Bible says God made protein pancakes for Elijah. That's the TFV, if you're wondering, okay? That's the TFV because it says that the birds fed him, a raven fed him down by. And the Bible goes on to say that one day, one day at the Kareef Ravine, the brook dried up. 
wasn't Elijah's fault that the brook dried up. It just stopped one day. And here's what God said. God said, leave here and go to Zarephath because I got another supply that you don't see yet. In fact, God said, Elijah, I got a widow. A widow, the poorest of the poor in the middle of a drought. Yeah, go there because she's got some supply for you. And he went 100 miles in the middle of the stinking desert to Zarephath. He went 100 miles in the heat to find the supply that God had. Don't you do dare quit in this season. God's got supply that you simply cannot see yet. Don't you miss the supply that God has consumed with the supply that you have lost. Don't, I'm telling you, just because the brook dried up doesn't mean God hates you, doesn't mean God's mad at you, it just means he has another resource and I'm telling somebody that's watching it's time to move on. Come on, get your, get your stuff together. God's still moving. He's just moving in a different way. God's still moving. He's just moving in a different place. Some of you have not, some of you aren't in a dry season. You're in a dry place, and it's time to move on because God's God's got some un, unseen. Some of you, man, this ain't in my notes. It's time to move on. Will, come on up. I'm, I'm gonna keep preaching. It's time to move on. It's time to move on from that hurt. It's time to move on from bitterness. You've been complaining too long. We've been in this thing five weeks, six weeks, however you want to count it. It's time. It's time to move on and say, God, what, what can I do with the resources that you have given me? God, what can I do? Because I believe, God, you still can move and you can still supply and you can still heal and you can still redeem and you can still deliver. God, you still can. If he can, we can. Number three, number three. Band, if you want to join me. Experience the blessing of trusting. Come on, if you haven't shared this stream yet, you might want to share this stream right now. Because God can bless you even when it looks barren. Experience the blessing of trusting. Jeremiah attaches blessing in trusting. He says there's a connection. Blessed are those let me talk to Will real quick. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord and those who put confidence in Him. He said the blessing is only attached to trusting. It's not to, it's, blessing is not attached to controlling. The, the, the blessing is not attached to worrying. Jeremiah said the blessing in this season is attached to trusting. And you can still grow and you can still produce fruit. But only if we trust. Look what it says. Verse number 8, part B. If you put your trust in God, your confidence in Him, you'll be like a tree planted by water. That tree planted by water will send out its roots to an unseen resource. To the stream, to the connection, to the source. Notice this. And that tree, the, the person who puts their trust in God, their confidence in Him, it does not fear When, 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 it's probably down here online, isn't it? Down here. When the heat comes. Oh, the heat's coming. It's not if it comes, it's when it comes. It does not fear when the heat comes, its leaves are always green. <laughs> it has no worries in the year of drought and never fails.
to bear fruit. What a verse. What a verse. I wish point number three was avoiding the drought. <laughs> point number three, avoiding the drought. Point number three, experience the rain. We receive your rain. Oh, it will rain eventually. But Jeremiah, compare and contrast someone who trusts in self and someone who trusts in God. Watch this. Both experienced the heat. Both experienced the drought. But did you notice the text? They have different outcomes. They have different outcomes. God is not going to stop the drought from coming. But hear not my word. Hear the word of the Lord today. You can still produce in the drought. There is no drought that can cancel the plan of God over your life. Hear the word of the Lord today. God is not going to prevent the heat from coming, but the heat can't stop the harvest. The heat can't stop the harvest. Don't you dare let the drought lie to you. God is powerful even in the drought. Don't you let the doubt, don't you let the drought derail your faith. I'm telling you the heat can't stop the harvest don't you dare give up in this season don't you dare throw in the towel in this season I want to declare to every person on this stream that God is powerful he's above the virus he's above the heat he's above the drought and today right now come on my amen gallery stand with me all over this room and let's declare right now that I even though the heat comes the harvest Harvest is coming. Come on. Well, thank you so much for joining us online today. If this message impacted you and you have a story to share, let us know. Email us at amen at anchorpoint.tv. Also, maybe you have a prayer request. We would love to pray with you. You can email that prayer request to care at anchorpoint.tv. And don't forget, you can join us online live every Sunday at 10 a.m. and 5.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. I hope to see you there.